Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Claire Lewis, so I'm Director of Programmes for Graphics and Illustration and also the Programme Leader for BA Graphic Design. And join with me, we've got Aidan. Hi everyone, my name is Aidan Delaney and I'm the Director of Programmes for Film and Photography. Okay, so really nice to have you with us today. Hopefully we'll be able to sort of help you out and answer some of the questions that you may have. Um, just to know that your microphone is muted. However, if you have any questions, then please do um, pop them into the using the Q&A button. And what we'll do is at the end, we'll answer those um, and hopefully we'll sort of be able to um, well, answer any questions you've got and um, feel free to sort of add more as and when you'd like to. OK, so also a little note just to say that this session will be recorded. All right, so today you've got the portfolio workshop for film, photography, fine art, graphics and illustration. And what we're going to cover today are which courses at Middlesex or MDX, as we call ourselves, require a portfolio, um, the format of the portfolio, the content of the portfolio, some presentation tips for you, um, and some careers and graduates final work. We're going to include a little bit of everything in there. So hopefully it will cover all the little things that you need and give you some nice tips for you to be able to put a portfolio together. So the courses at Middlesex that require a portfolio are here listed. So we've got animation, 3D animation and games. Fashion communication styling, fashion design, fashion textiles, the foundation course, um, the interior architecture, interior design, photography, graphic design, illustration, fine art and film. So the process, the process that um, will happen from Middlesex if you apply to us, um, all students will be asked to upload a digital portfolio. What I will say, sorry, is what I should have said at the beginning is I'm going to speak on behalf of graphics, photography and fine art. And Aidan's actually going to talk on behalf of film. So it is a slightly different process for the film students. So please do bear with us. And um, but however, the portfolio tips will be very similar for all courses. So all students will be asked to upload a digital portfolio when you apply to um, one of our courses. And we recommend that you upload your portfolio as a single PDF if you can. However, if you can't, don't worry. Um, a lot of students say they'll upload a Microsoft Word document with a little link in there, so a link to a website, or if you've got a Behance page or an Instagram link, um, you can pop that onto the Microsoft Word document and send that, and we can just get to it using the link. Okay. However, what you need to know is each course will give you clear instructions on, on what you need to do and how you need to send us your portfolio, so please don't worry about that. And you've always got the opportunity to ask questions if you've got any sort of concerns. We will also offer um, a Meet the Tutor. So deciding to study at university is a big step, as I'm sure you're all aware. It's a big decision. Um, so we invite you to Meet the Tutor event, so where you'll be able to ask any questions you may have about the course. You get to see our facilities, you get to have a look around the campus, and you just get to find a little bit more about us and how we teach um, and how we support you guys and, um, and anything else, basically, that's on your mind. Because it is, like I say, it's a big decision. So the more you can find out, the more informed you are and the, the easier the decision becomes. So the Meet the Tutor events, again, will be sort of sent to you as and when you apply to a course and you'll be given options of dates. And you can meet us online or you can meet us on campus. So moving on, the content and format of your portfolio. So just going to give you a few little tips and then what I'm going to do is move on to show you some examples of some specific courses and what some of the pages um, of portfolios look like. So people who've applied to us in the past and have got a place on the course. So some tips for you. Um, so start by presenting your work neatly and against a white background. Now that one kind of sounds a little bit obvious when it says present it neatly, but it really is important that you organise your work and you really sort of think about what you want to present and how you present it. So neatly um, and not overcrowded is really great. So if you can make sure that your image has got plenty of space on the page, you're not trying to put on too many, um, just so that we can see what we're looking at. Because again, we're going to be looking at these on um, the computer screen. So it really helps us if it's nice and neatly pr um, presented and not very crowded. So we encourage you to include your sketchbook work. And by that, you can scan a number of pages if you'd like to, or you can take photographs. However, um, you like you, you can do either one so um, avoid including too much text so what we would sort of say if you've got the image I always sort of say to people think of your image as the hero the work is the hero that's the thing that you want to show off that's the thing that you've worked really hard on um, and is what you know makes up your portfolio is that work so that's what we want to see so you don't worry about including too much text you don't have to write everything that you've done in there you don't have to put the whole brief just a sentence or a little caption project titles are really useful 
um, just like maybe a project title and a couple of words just to say what we're looking at. But actually just think of it, the work is the hero. So the bigger you can make your piece of work, the better. Um, 3D artworks, we'd like you to include those still. So please don't not do that because of the digital portfolio. Um, and again, just photograph them, but think about how you photograph them. So put them against maybe a neutral backdrop. Just consider, uh, again, it's just about making that piece of work the hero again, isn't it? It's about making sure the background isn't distracting from things. Um, so large physical 2D work, again, can be photographed or scanned. And when I say photograph, please don't worry about having to have a fancy um, camera or anything like that. Your camera phone will do a good enough job, so please don't worry about that. Right. So really importantly, your portfolio needs to represent you. It needs to represent your interests and your ways of doing things and what your ambitions are. It doesn't need to represent your tutor or your parents or any of your friends. It has to represent you because um, that's important. You need to make sure you end up at the right university for the right course. And actually, um, by putting the wrong stuff, stuff that doesn't represent the work you you know do, then you could end up in the wrong place and that's not in your best interest. So make sure your work, your portfolio represents you and the stuff that you like to do. Um, it can cover a range of subjects. So we're really aware of the fact that a lot of students will um, come to us having studied something quite broad. So for example, we get a lot of students that have studied art and design, or they may have studied um, fine art, but want to go on to a graphic design course um, and may not have much graphic design work. And that's absolutely fine. We recognize that and we understand that. And we're very good at sort of seeing like the potential in a piece of, uh, in a portfolio. So please don't worry about that. So you will find that everyone's portfolio will be slightly different because they will have studied different courses. Um, so include, like I say, include what you think represents you and the work you like. So it could have typography. It could include layout. It could have some photography. It might have life drawings in there, illustrations, printmaking, animations. The list is endless, really. So include the work that you've got and the work that you're happy with. All right. So everyone will have a different portfolio. What I would say on the flip side to that is that if you are applying to a subject, for example, graphic design, I always sort of try and say, if you can, try and put at least one piece of work that represents the subject that you're um, applying to. So a lot of it might be what you class as fine artwork, but if you can, maybe you've got um, a piece that is a bit more graphics based. So it might be that you have a book cover or a poster that you've done. Or if you've not done any of those, then don't worry, you could always sort of create something. I imagine you might have a really lovely photograph or an illustration that you could actually convert into a book cover, for example. It's just a thought. It's not something you have to do, but it's sometimes quite a nice thing to do, especially if you're a little bit concerned that you might not have enough work in that subject area. OK. And when I say that I'm using graphic design, sorry, as the, the course quite often, again, because I'm program lead for that. But all of these tips are relevant to any sort of the subjects that you are applying to. So the really important thing for us is for you to know that not everything needs to be finished. Development work is what matters to us because it shows us your process. It shows us that you've got ideas. It shows us how you research. It shows us how you learn from your mistakes because it's all that cliche, isn't it? Your, your best work comes from your mistakes. You learn from failure. So it's nice to see how you've tested things, how you've learned from that and you've tested something else and how that's led you to your final outcome. So what actually a lot of staff will be looking for or is your sketchbook work, is your experimentation. It's the things that went wrong as well as the nice finished pieces as well. So don't hide what you might consider the failures from us because actually we see those as really lovely things that we want to actually see. Okay, so just moving on, on there. So there's some kind of little tips. Um, I'm just gonna go through now a few of the courses. So graphics, illustration, fine art and photography um, and show you some examples of portfolios that we have been given in the past and then Aidan will go on and be able to sort of talk you through um, Phil. So for BA Graphics we review all applicant portfolios online so we look at every single portfolio um, and it's always a member of staff from the graphics team and the same for if it's to illustration it will be a member of the illustration team a photography photography team we always make sure we have a look at your portfolios because we know our subjects and we know how to spot the potential. We'll also offer to meet the tutor event. So as I discussed earlier, we offer to uh, meet you either online or on campus. If you can come on campus, I always think that's the best option because you can get a real feel for the university and the course and the space that you'll be studying on. Um, and at Middlesex, we've got fantastic facilities, um, open access facilities for you. Not only have we got um, studio spaces, we do have um, amazing sort of photography studios, print studios, 
Um, and it's always nice for you to sort of come and have a look and see where you would be studying. And again, really just a chance for you to ask any questions. So this is an example of a page of someone's um, graphic design portfolio that they sent in. He's now um, studying with us at the moment. Really clear, you can see there's not much um, type on there. It's a project title um, and a little bit of text about it. And then the main thing are the images. This is another student's example. So this one um, was from more of a fine art background. And this is an example of the work she showed us from her sketchbook. And again, a little bit more digital. So this is digital illustration, again, for graphics, um, um, the BA graphics course. And just sort of showing us, again, a small sort of caption and just saying this is her illustration work and a caption to say what it was. This is some experimentation work from another student, again, just playing with light, um, not a final piece, but showing us what she did to get to a final piece. And again, it's really varied. Um, like I say, we're not expecting you to be graphic designers. The whole point of you coming to study with us is that we teach you how to do graphic design. Um, but I would look at these and I would say that these are quite graphic based collages. They're beautiful pieces of work. And again, lovely sort of sketchbook work, showing us how they work, how the thought process. Um, and again, I actually think this is a really beautiful layout. So that to me shows sort of graphic design skill. And some development work. So as you can see, we focus quite a bit on the development work and not so much the outcomes. And then eventually, just to finish the slide for BA graphics, this is just an example of some of the student work we do. So we cover a range of things in the graphics courses through from editorial to digital design, um, UI, UX, web design, um, you name it, we um, sort of cover it. So it's a really lovely broad course in BA graphics. So moving on to illustration. Um, again, BA Illustration will review all applicant portfolios online. And again, they will offer the Meet the Illustration tutors either online or on campus. And again, we really sort of urge you and encourage you to just come and meet us and find out what we're about. And we can just answer any question that you may have. And quite often at these events as well, we have students that you can chat to if you want to. And they can just tell you what it's like to be a student and to how you can sort of navigate the student life. All right, and here's some lovely examples, again, just sort of looking at what they include. So um, some sort of a mix of final pieces and sketchbook work. Some lovely illustrations there. All, a lot, again, focusing on the workings of a project, what leads to the final outcome. Some life drawing, again, in illustration, that's quite important. So if you can include that, that would be great. And it doesn't have to be life drawing in the sense of having a life model. It could be, you know, still life and just drawings that you've done um, around. So maybe you've gone out and done some observation drawing as well. And it can be a real mix of things. Remember, like I say, at the beginning, it's all about um, the work that represents you. So here again, in illustration, they encourage to do a lot of printmaking as well. So you can include printmaking work as well. And also a little bit of moving image work. We, we'll get taught how to do that. And this is just an example of some BA illustration graduate work now. Moving on to photography. So again, the photography will review all applicant portfolios and they offer a meet the tutor event. These events will give you the um, chance to meet the current students and just see the studios. Now the photography studios are really worth seeing. They are a wonderful sort of facility. What to include in a photography portfolio. So photographs and other artworks, um, you'll include your sketchbooks, your project work and work that demonstrates technical abilities and work that you are passionate about. So as you can see, it's very similar in terms of um, what the courses are asking for. Um, it's that potential that we're looking for. Sorry, I shouldn't flick through there. So the, we always sort of get asked the question, how roughly how many pieces? And I really honestly can say there isn't a specific number. I mean, photography is saying around 20 images, and I would say that's about right um, in the sense that um, it really depends on the student and the, the amount of project work they've got. Some people might be doing a BTEC and therefore might have more than someone who's maybe just doing one A-level. So it really does depend on the student and the portfolio. So how to present it as a PDF, again, as we've discussed, um, and make sure you consider the layout and it's around 20 images. So you can see here an example of portfolios that they've been sent through. So again, really making most of the image and as little text as you possibly can, really, just to make sure that the image really is the thing that's the focus. And then moving on to fine art. 
So the format. So online portfolio should be a single PDF or a simple blog or website. Or again, if you like, on a Word document, you pop your website address on there. Work should be documented clearly against a white background. An audio visual work can be included um, as well if you'd like to. Again, if you want to include a link to that, if you've got it embedded in sort of YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, you can again Word document and you can provide a link for that. That's not a problem. Experimentation and progression work and shows work that represents who you are as an artist. So again, some little examples here of some experimentation, some mixed media, some life drawing, um, some you know, in situ drawing, some projections, some um, installation work. So just before moving on, so as you can see, um, the courses that we asked for, like I was saying at the beginning, we it's just about representing yourself and making sure that you put the work in that you are happy with. You can't go far wrong from there, so please don't worry too much. Um, that's me from the courses that I'm going to cover. I'm going to let Aidan um, tell you a little bit more about film. Hi, everyone. Um, so film's a little bit different on two accounts. Um, the first is that it is not required. Um, you can choose to do a portfolio on what that operates then is as a transition tool. I'll speak a bit more about that when I have the details on the slide. And the second thing is there's quite a lot of options because film's a very diverse thing. So if everything from script writing to cinematography to producing, so very varying disciplines. Um, very collaborative degree, uh, practice-based learning at Middlesex, and we have a strong focus on employability skills. Um, next slide, please, Claire. Um, yeah, so applicants who meet entry requirements are invited to submit a, a digital portfolio, and portfolios which meet the criteria will convert a conditional offer to an unconditional offer. So three options uh, for portfolio submission. You only pick one. It's very important you don't think you have to do all three. Um, so next slide. Option one, you submit a film that you've worked on. Option two, you submit a digital portfolio of artwork related to film. And option three, you respond to a set treatment. So that's for anyone who hasn't done anything related to filmmaking in the past. You pick option three. Um, so option one, submit a film you've worked on. Um, provide an example of one film you've previously worked on and a contextual statement of 100 words or less explaining your role and contribution to that film. Um, it's expected that the film was part of a collaboration with others or you contribute to the group effort. And you can choose an example from college or an A-level project. If you choose to submit a film as your digital portfolio, you upload it as a single PDF or Microsoft Word document containing your contextual statement, that's the 100 words, and a link to where it's hosted, whether it's to YouTube or Vimeo or wherever. Um, and that PDF goes to the applicant portal at Middlesex. The second option, number two, a digital portfolio of artwork. Um, next, next slide, please, Claire. Uh, a creative portfolio evidencing examples of practice related to filmmaking, such as painting, drawing, photography, visual design, sonic art, narrative prose, or screenwriting. If you choose this option, you combine your work into a single PDF document and include a contextual statement explaining how your practice relates to film. So you could come from any discipline. If you've got a, an extensive portfolio of photography or, or even sketching, um, just say how it would relate to film. Um, and once again, that PDF goes to the Middlesex applicant portal. And in the case of Sonic Art, you would attach a link. So you either upload that to SoundCloud or again, YouTube um, and put that link on the, the PDF that you upload. So here are some examples. Um, this is an example of a portfolio of artwork related to films, concept art for production design. So we have a lot of students who focus on production design or art direction. Um, this is a film that was made two years ago um, and a third year student these concept arts are from, um, but work like this. Um, and the third option, if a candidate has no examples of prior work, but still want to submit a portfolio, it will ask you to complete a task responding to a set treatment. And you do one of the following within this. You either do a storyboard and create every shot that you visualize in response to the treatment, the second option is you create a production plan detailing how you go about organizing a film shoot to make a production based on this treatment. And the third option 
is write a script for the treatment, putting it into dramatic form. Um, if you choose option three, once again, a single PDF containing all your work and a contextual statement, 100 words or less, explaining your response to the one page treatment. Um, and yet again, uh, that PDF goes to Middlesex Applicant Portal. Um, here are some examples of what that would look like visually. On the far left slide, you have a storyboard. In the middle, you've got a Gantt chart showing how you would go about doing uh, a production schedule and mapping that out. And the third on the far right is basically putting it into script form. That's what it looks like visually. And um, what we look for in a portfolio. So evidence of an informed interest in film and or television. Um, prior knowledge of some aspect of filmmaking practice. Um, examples of creative of critical thinking in relation to one or more of the following areas. Visual communication, including drawings, photographs, video, graphic design, storyboards. Storytelling, writing or filmmaking. And film craft skills, so that would be camera operating, sound recording or video editing. Um, so portfolio is positioned, as I mentioned, as a conversion tool to move from a conditional to unconditional, and it's not mandatory. So potential scenarios of where you would submit a portfolio. First one is your application is submitted and based on the tariff points, you receive a conditional offer. The second scenario would be if the portfolio is submitted to an acceptable standard, the conditional offer will change to unconditional. And the third option, if no portfolio is submitted, the final decision on the application will be made entirely on tariff. Um, and fourth, if an applicant already holds a tariff, they will receive an unconditional offer without the portfolio. So that's it. I don't think there's any need to show that, Claire. Yeah. So hopefully you found that useful. I know we sort of... Um went through it maybe quite quickly so there might be some sort of questions it's quite difficult to sort of cover everything that you need to in a short amount of time and make sure that there's time for questions at the end which i think are normally the most important bit um our next open day which is really important is saturday 24th of february and i'd really urge you to sort of to go to an open day i think they're so important you know you're going to study here for the next three years of your life so you want to really go and get a feel for where you're going to study get to see what the facilities are like how often you'll get to go in them and what are the staff like as well and, and just get an overall feel of where you're going to be and you'll be amazed actually having done that it'll make you feel much more relaxed about your first day when you come to study with us or your chosen university in September time so please do sort of consider that. The other thing as well to remember is that if you can't make an open day, then please do reach out to us because we normally sort of offer, like I said, meet the tutor events. And there's normally little events that we can invite you to or little tours that we are more than happy to put on for you to sort of come and have a look and just ask any questions that you may have. So we've got um, one question, question. Here, yeah. which is great. And it's got based on coming up with a portfolio, can your work be taken in a white background or a black background? Um, wait, I'm coming up with a portfolio. Can you, um, I think you're asking me there. Sorry, I pop, if I got this wrong, then please do just pop another message in there, and I'll make sure that I sort of answer it, um, better the second time round. Um, I think what you're asking me there is background. I suggested um that the white against a white background sort of helps. Oh, that's a very sort of generic thing, really. If you've already got a background in your work, then that's absolutely fine. Please don't feel like you have to edit it out and sort of do lots of Photoshop trickery and magic. Um, it was more that if you're taking um, photographs of your work, for example, you've got some 3D work, you want to take a photo of it, try and just make sure it's against a neutral background. Now, it can be black, white, it can be beige, it can be whatever colour you think sort of helps sort of stand, make your piece of work stand out. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, is filming and photography part of the portfolio? So from our point of view, yes, I would say photography. So the courses that I cover, so graphics, illustration, fine art and photography, um, I would say yes. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, some film and some photography work in any of those subject areas. Um, and to be honest, um, 
it's okay if it's not there as well. So that's what I mean by it being very unique to you. So some people might have a lot of photog photographic work and that's absolutely fine, pop that in, because that might be what you've been studying. That might be your main area of interest. I, for example, on graphics, will get quite a lot of people that have um, a lot of illustration work and a lot of photo photographic work. And it'll be the same for illustration. Obviously, if you're applying for um, the photography course, then you, there would be an expectation for there to be photography work in there. In terms of those other courses, well, film, sometimes you'll get some students that will have done some animations, but um, I'll let Aidan just answer a little bit about film in portfolio. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the, the, the answer to this question is fundamentally what you want to study, but at the same time, um, both fine art have an element of moving image as they progress throughout the years. And in film, if you're interested in the technical side of film, like cinematography, then both photography and filming would be very relevant. If you haven't done any filming, then photography is still very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you'll find what's a lovely thing about Middlesex is it's very broad. Um, and what you'll find is most courses, their first years are that sort of foundation level in terms of really introducing you to the subject area. So some people might have done lots of subject, but nothing of something else. So what we do is we introduce you to the subject area and um, everything that it can be. And then as we sort of go through, you start to specialise a little bit more. Um, there's a question that I want to study a, photo a photography course. However, my college courses aren't designed. Will that affect me in terms of getting accepted? Now, that is a brilliant question. And I can and I know that that's a concern for a lot of students. So I'm really glad you asked that, actually. Um, no is the answer. So you must remember that we are not expecting you to be a, um, a specialist in the area. That's the whole point of you coming to study with us, that we can introduce you to the area and we can teach you in that area. And then you learn about that. So if you want to do photography, then I would absolutely expect you to have done like an art and design background. That's absolutely fine. Um, remember the tip that I sort of said at the beginning, just make sure that you, if you can try and include some photography work. And if you're not sure that you've got enough, well, it can be self-directed stuff as well. So it might be that you've taken some of your own photography in your own time. So please feel free to include that as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So please don't think that you have to have got lots of work in the subject that you were studying for. Remember, we are very good at spotting the potential, okay. Um, can someone look at portfolios just like how they do with a personal statement? Well. Yes, is the answer that I would say. And I always sort of encourage people to come in again on the open day. And I've had this in the past a few times and recently because I put the invite in, included in our invite, that you will find that if you come to an open day, a member of staff will be happy to have a look at your portfolio and give you a little bit of guidance. Um, and again, Middlesex, we really sort of pride ourselves on that personal touch. We really like to get to know our students um, and work with our students. And we want to make sure that you're making the right decision as well, because we recognize it's a really big decision for you. So we will always be more than happy to meet with you at an open day and have a chat. And so I would always say, feel free to bring that portfolio. So for example, the next one is Saturday, 24th of February. So book on and, and bring the portfolio with you. Um, what is the most optional course between photography and graphic design based on what you want to choose? Um, I think that maybe if I'm understanding that right, the question there is asking that maybe the difference between photography and graphic design. Um, the difference really is, again, I would really urge you if you're a little bit unsure and it's absolutely fine to be unsure, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big decision to make. So again, coming along to something like an open day, and just listening to the talks and speaking to the tutors and find out what the differences are and really getting to see some examples of student work that will always really help you. Um, photography is a specialist photography course, so you would expect to do, um, you know, the photography for the all of the three years. Whereas graphic design is a little bit more general in the sense that you would cover a lot of things. So um, I have students that have a specialism in photography. Um, so they will do photographic work, but the majority of their work is graphic design with a, a photographic specialism, for example. So um, if you were to do a website, you might use photography in that. If you were to do a brand uh, or an exhibition design or whether you to do a book cover, you might lean a little bit more towards photography if that is your interest. Whereas others, if they're a bit more illustrative, they might lean towards illustration or typography. So the photography is more, I would say, the specialist photography course and graphic design is a little bit more, you can, um, a little bit broader and you can bring photography into it. Hope that answers your question. Um, <laughs> um, I would yeah, say... I mean... 
Sorry, go on. Sorry, I, I was just going to say, I mean, I think the big thing with Middlesex is the facilities um, that questions kind of are generated around the facilities when people see it. It's kind of, you know, we've 3D workshops, we've laser printing, we have CNC machines, all of this kind of wide range of things. And I guess the questions often come up, will I be able to use those facilities? Yeah, um, I, I think, I think yeah, is. that's true, isn't it? It's uh, And I think the answer to that as well is something, again, you only find out when you go and visit places is what the facilities are and how they are. I mean, we're very lucky at Middlesex. We have fairly open access facilities. There are some areas that you have to book. So, for example, photography is what I would class as an open access area. But for obvious reasons, you have to pop in and sort of book a time slot for when you could use it so that the studio is free and for you to use. Um, there's a question here. Do you know around what time portfolios are asked for after application is sent? Um, it will be within hopefully within a week or two. You should once the university um receives it, um, you should be asked for a portfolio um fairly quickly. So if you're not, then maybe just um give them a little nudge and find out. Just make sure everything's okay. Um, and then we normally try our very best to get an answer to you as quickly as possible. Some courses actually will contact the student directly to let them know that they've had a look at the portfolio and whether there's been an offer. Um, so that's also a nice way as well for you to have contact with the tutors. And that means, you know, that if you've got any other questions about things then you've got that contact that you can sort of reach out and speak to. Um, also, I would say sort of don't rush. Obviously, your portfolios are the first deadline is at the end of this month. And that's absolutely fine. If you've missed that, then please don't worry. There is still the opportunity for you to all the way sort of through the term for you to put in a, an application and portfolio. Um, would the school provide materials or do we have to order? Um, we are a very, we understand sort of the cost of living, I think. I think we all understand how tricky things have been. So what we do is we, Middlesex is a very inclusive university. Um, it doesn't believe in people if they can't afford to, she can't have their education. We're very much um, about, you know, it's about the ideas and about your ability, not whether you've got enough money to have the materials. So we provide as much as we possibly can. So, for example, we have uh, the Kit Hub. And actually, maybe, Aidan, you could tell them a little bit more about the Kit Hub because you're a bit more of your specialism. Sure, yeah. Um, the Kit Hub is our loan store. Um, we have a vast array of equipment that students borrow. Um, depending on what year of study, it dictates the, the access of kit you can access. So, you know, you kind of level up uh, year one, you get things like the LSR cameras and lighting and sound kit. And each year that you go up, the, the kit gets kind of progressively more complicated. Um, you need an induction into most of the kit, but some kit is induction free, meaning we just need to be sure that you know how to use it properly. Um, loans are for three days. Um, it's all free. Um, what else can I say? I mean, the, the the range of kit is just vast, whether it's things like musical instruments, microphones, uh, projectors, uh, Wacom tablets, um, video cameras, high end video cameras. It's it's a vast range of, of gear. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you'll get taught how to use all that. But also on top of that as well, like I say, we have um, things like the print rooms. So like ink, paper is all provided. We have Reaper Graphics Studio. So again, a um, number of the courses will use Reaper Graphics, which is a basically a professional standard print room. Um, and what we do is we provide print for free for you. So if a member of staff as part of their brief asks you for an A1 poster at the end, then you would get that A1 poster printed at a professional standard for free. Um, so where possible, we cover sort of costs. Um, do you have to come into interviews is another question. No, you do not have to come in for interviews. We don't do interviews. We do portfolio reviews, which are online, and that would just be the tutor doing that. However, we do the meet the tutor, and that's not an interview. That really is genuinely an opportunity for you just to come in, have a chat with us, get to see what we're like, um, maybe even sort of get to sort of walk through the classrooms and just see what, what they're like in action and um, just get a feel for things. So there is no need for you to come in for an interview. Um, how many images can I put on a page? Um, really depends on the work, to be honest. So again, what I've just say, if you're unsure, there's nothing wrong with putting one image on one page. And that's absolutely fine. Um, you'll see some of the examples that I showed. Some did exactly that. So, you know, the photography ones, for example, there were some really large format images. 
there and again sort of illustration um has some lovely sort of full size illustrations um but equally you might find that you put a couple of um photographs on a page it really depends on the work um so please don't worry too much about that the only thing i would just say is don't try don't crowd it on you know if you need to use another page and have give everything a little bit more space then that's absolutely fine and um, use another page um so but there are no sort of numbers what i would say is it's very difficult to get an understanding from a portfolio of much less than five pages um but equally you don't need to include 100 it might be a little bit too much so the nice number the average sort of a number for most people is around the 20 page mark but remember that also includes some sketchbook work as well um for photography would we be needing a camera to work with no absolutely not so again some of the cameras that you'll be using are state of the art they are updated regularly and they are expensive um and that is what the kit hub is for as well it's recognizing that you know we can't expect you to have all the latest equipment so we would provide that for you Photography as well, have, like I say, have got some absolutely fantastic state-of-the-art photography studios, which are open to all courses as well. You'd be taught how to use those areas, and they have then got a number of technicians in there that are amazing photographers in their own right, and they will actually work with you. So what we, um, the, the photography department, how it works is if a student from any subject, if you're going from fine art, from illustration, or whichever course, you would go downstairs, and the technicians would really encourage you to go down and have a conversation with them about your project and what your needs are. And they would then sort of chat with you and sort of explain what the best studio facility would be, what camera, and they would help you um, book a space. Um, and then they would set up that space and they would work with you in that space to make sure that you achieve what you needed to achieve. So it's really like a bonus, really, because not only do you get your tutorial support in the classroom, you also get these wonderful technicians within the um, technical areas as well. I read for illustration that we are limited to 15 pages. Is that right? Oh, no, sorry. I'm, if that you read that, that's um, that must have been a little bit of a typo. So apologies for that. Um, not limited to 15 pages. There's genuinely no sort of fixed number. We Like I was just saying, I think photography mentioned it as well, that roughly 20 pages. But like I say, if it's a few less or a few more, that's absolutely fine. Um, just try to give us enough to get a really good understanding of who you are and the kind of work that you do and enough to sort of put in some sketchbook work as well as your final pieces. Hopefully that helps there as well. Um, I know this is obviously about a portfolio, but if you've got any questions about the courses as well, we'll do our absolute best to answer those. So please do feel free to ask any course related questions as well. We'll give people a few minutes. You've all been very good actually asking questions. Hopefully it has been useful for you. It's that time now, isn't it, where you're all putting your portfolios together. But please just make sure you know that it's nothing to worry about. Don't get too anxious about it. You can't go wrong if you put work that represents you. That's all you can do. And like I say, if you are a little bit unsure, then we do have those open days and you should feel free to just come in and get some advice and some guidance if you wish to. Would there be a portfolio for fine art? Yes, there would be a portfolio for fine art. Um, so I'll just quickly go back through it. Just if you bear with me, sorry, I'm going to flick through very, very quickly to go back. Um, and I can just show you some examples of the fine art. There we go, I'll just start at the beginning of the fine art. So the portfolio again, sort of the same rules as apply. So the, the rules that I sort of talked about at the beginning, um, PDF or a blog website, however you've got your work to present, that's absolutely fine. Um, it says clearly against a white background. Again, the white background is just a guidance. Don't worry if it's against another color, that's absolutely fine. Um, and again, just showing um, experimentation and progression of work. So here are just some examples of the kinds of work that we would like to see in a fine art portfolio. But remember, these are just examples. Um, you might not have any of these, or you might have all of them, or you might have some of them. That's absolutely fine. OK, so that just gives you, hopefully that helps a little bit and gives you a bit of an idea.
Okay, another question. So should we include brainstorming pages, which are a bit more broad than our project, but sort of led to the idea of the project? Absolutely. We love stuff like that. It's really nice to get an insight into how you work. That's what we're really looking for. We really want to make sure that you end up at the right place um, and on the right course. So um, brainstorming, the way you think, the way you approach a project, anything like that, fantastic. And genuinely, when we sort of talk about the failures, that's not a failure in the sense that you think we mean. It's like it's something that didn't go right, but you only know what's going to work by testing out the things beforehand, by developing and testing things, by getting things wrong, because you then realize what doesn't work to be able to find out what does work. So all that lovely stuff that leads up to a project, absolutely, that's the best bit, really. Um, how much portfolio would be needed in the course? I'm not sure I understand that question. Sorry, Abenina. Um, if you'd like to just maybe um, reword that possibly, because I don't want to answer how much portfolio would be needed in the course. Um, like I say, all courses except for the film courses require a portfolio for entry. Um, the portfolios for film are optional. They, they're a good way, a conversion tool from um, conditional to unconditional. One thing as well I didn't mention actually is um, self-directed work. That's always a really nice way. As some students quite often they'll come to an open day and they might not have studied any art and design subjects in the past and they might actually think, well, I want I actually want to, but they haven't done that at college. And some of them are concerned that that's too late for them. And I would always say, no, it's not. I always think it's um, really shows strength of character when someone turns up with a portfolio that's been self-directed because it shows that, you know, not only are they doing all the stuff um, for their other college courses, they're also actually doing all this extra on top because they really love what they do. Um, so that's another thing you can consider as well. There's no need to have self-directed work in there, but if you do have it, then do put that in because it's always nice to see what people are doing outside of their college work as well. It might just be that um, someone's asked you to do a logo for them or some photographs for them or a little film. It's always nice to see. I think we might have answered everyone's questions. Again, me and Aidan can just hang on for another minute or so. Um, however, please, if we have answered your questions, if you have nothing else you would like to ask us, then please do feel free to sort of leave the event now. Hope to see you on um, the open day on the 24th of February. Hopefully you found the QR code. Um, just in case, I will flick back through to the end. Sorry, because I'm in screen share. I can't get to the side. There we go. I'll just pop that QR code up for you there so you can see it and um, scan it if you'd like to book in with us. Um, would you need sketchbooks for your portfolio? So, um, yes. So sketchbooks, obviously, because all the sketchbook um, portfolios, sorry, will be digital. It will mean the sketchbooks are just photographs of pages. So you don't have to include the whole sketchbook. Just do some selected pages from your sketchbook. Take a few photos and pop them in. So it might be that you pop a couple of images from your sketchbook and then maybe a fine, the final piece. Or it might be that you have just the final piece for one project or another project. You might just have a few sketchbook pages. It's really up to you. Um, again, if you're really unsure, then please sort of come in and sort of speak to us and ask us for a little bit of guidance. We're more than happy to do that. Or ask your tutor. And your tutor will be really well placed to be able to advise you on what projects because they'll know your projects well. So they'll be able to sort of explain to you or help you decide what are the best pieces to pop in a portfolio. OK, so I think we've probably answered um, all the questions. So um, just to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, good luck with putting your portfolios together. I hope this has helped. Um, and we hope to see you at the next open day. Take care.